Hello, and welcome to Zim Explorer. I'm Dr. Abstract. In this Zim Explorer, we're going to take a look at how to start Zim, just how to begin. What are some of the easy steps we can do to start coding on the canvas? Uh, and let your creativity fly wild. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm glad you're here. Welcome. We're going to go to the Zim site at zimjs.com. So that's zimjs.com. And there's a few ways to begin. Well, one, you might want to see some examples as to what you can build. So let me just poke on that. There is an intro page that you can look at, and it has some comments in the code. So code is what we use to make all of these things. Uh, most of these ones at the top are just recent features that we've added. Um, that's, that's just how it worked out. Some of these, as you come on down here, are more complete things like Gen Pen and a Space Guy and some games. Anyway, they might be more uh, complete and there's some features there. But you can go into any of these and just poke around a little bit. But like I said, some of the recent features are a bit more boring. There's also um, NFTs, but I, I wouldn't look at those first either. NFTs are on what's called the interplanetary file system. And sometimes they can be slow to show you uh, what's happening. And note that up here, there's a little bit of a menu as well. Featured NFTs, collections, and code pen. Code pen is an excellent way, but I'm just going to jump down to collections here. Collections are, well, Zim Story is a video that, or it's not a video, but it's an example of a Zim book. And we did our main Zim video uh, looking through that book. So it may be that you've come to, to Zim already looking there. And it's, it's pretty good because it shows you some of the, the very basics that you can use to make things. And actually, that's a good way to see what's, what can be made in the canvas, too, is our videos. I feel like I should poke something here. <laughs> you know, we should see something if we've come to examples. Um, but we have these paths. Uh, these are collections of things. This is showing us a bunch of ways that we use paths. So uh, let me press on that, I suppose. This um, was built in Zim 9 or Zim Neo. And you see how we're animating things along the path there. And uh, so here we hit go and that will animate along the path. And you can also edit the path. Um, you can drag things along the path too. So here I'll hit the drag one. So this is me, Dr. Abstract, and now I'm dragging that along the path. And so there's the path. The path too is editable, so I can pick that up and kind of move it like that. It gets smaller as he goes away, even do a loop the loop. Um, you know, maybe we could look at that and see, like, are you thinking, hey, we could make that? <laughs> are you thinking, no way, I would never be able to make that? We can hide the path. A anyway, um, that's one thing that Zim can do. There's also, we've just sort of left the examples area, but there's also these 10 things that are good for interactive media. So this is... Uh, a whole field called interactive media it used to be ruled by Flash. Before that, it was ruled by Director and CD-ROMs. Uh, now it's ruled by the web, and we're on the canvas. So maybe one day it'll be ruled by Zim. Who knows? Perhaps you'll do it. Uh, but anyway, certainly our creativity can can be um, answered here uh, on, uh, in, with coding on the canvas. So there's how to make puzzles and e-learning apps and these cool info actives and wonder cards so there's all sorts of if you go in here you can take a look this is for art right here so here's examples of different art being made these are interactives the nfts are mostly art uh, that's gen pen so um okay that's art but if you hit the more section here then it tells you how, what things we're using to make art and what zim has done is it made it's made some coding easier rather than having a more complex i don't know if you can see that more complicated looking code with all sorts of little different things in there we just say loop 10 times 
<laughs> we got <laughs> we got a few little things here too, but uh, anyway, this is standard JavaScript, and we're we're using JavaScript or the the that's called a an arrow function right there by standard JavaScript. It is using the Zim loop though. Here is raw JavaScript where we're doing a for loop here. So we have some helpers that will help you code and make it you know easy to understand what's going on. Uh, and, and that all was for stuff that can be uh, used to make art, for instance. So lots of information on how to do that. And I'm going to hit less now. If we go back, there's information on games, much, much the same way. The learn section might be where you would want to start if you were starting to code, certainly, or starting to code on the canvas. This video, by the way, will we'll have it work for both people, uh, both types of people. First, uh, for people who are just learning how to code, Zim is great for that. For people who are learning how to code on the canvas, Zim is also great for that. You may have already coded in this video. Uh, you know, I think you'll be interested to see what we build and how. It'll be along the lines of this, new circle, 100 and radius, green. We're in a center on the stage and drag it. So uh, we're quite proud of this arrangement right here. This lets kids get something on the screen, start dragging it right away. And so I do want to go into the code almost immediately. Uh, the learn section does that as well. It says, hey, uh, we can go get the template and do it. And that's what we're going to do in this explore. Or it even says we can um, code online at Slate or Lab. And it suggests that you go into Slate and put that right in there. Shall we try it together? So it would be a matter of, oh, they, <laughs> I've, I've tricked people. It's not copyable. So we're, we're, we're trying to get them to actually type it. I, I think this one is uh, um, selectable here. But anyway, let's go into Slate here. And luckily, I remember how to do that. Oh, I was already um, practicing. It, it's remembered what I was working on last time, which was showing these things that are called sprites. So we'll clear this. Clear. Yes, clear the code. And uh, this is a place, I have a few things. I've, I've gone into the assets up top here and I've collected Butterfly, Monkey, Explosion, and Glow. Those were the sprites that we you know, were showing there. So you might not see this. I would have to go clear my assets, uh, which I could do, but I won't bother. So um, on this side, I'm going to type new circle. So this is JavaScript code and the circle is what's called a class. It's, um, it's like instructions or ingredients for making an object. And when we use the new keyword, we can make an object from that class or from those instructions. And we can tell it extra information in here as well, such as the radius and the color as, as you saw before. Dot center means we want to center it on the stage. And if we just do that and test it, there is the default black circle centered on the stage. If we made this something like 100 and comma red, then uh, I save it and I've got a red circle save or test there. <clears throat> the dot drag is like so, and now I can drag the circle. Okay, cool. Um, that's called an object because if we want, we can make two of them. Uh, so let's copy this line right here. And we can have two circles. Uh, they'll both be centered. Why don't we make this one blue? and test. Okay, and now we've got two circles, one red and one blue. So we use, there's one class called circle, and we made two different objects from it, and we're dragging um, those. Okay, so uh, that's pretty cool. Um, well, there's, uh, this, is, this was set up for kids, and actually that's pretty good for people who want to start coding. If you act like a kid, that, that works pretty well. There's some docs on all that stuff. There's help here on adding background colors, background images, adding images, uh, using containers, adding sounds, background sounds, etc. And you open those up and it talks about how, how we do that using the assets that are available for us up in here. Uh, but back on the main kid site here, um, there is magic and spells. So magic discusses programming to a kid. So it's learning what are these display objects? How do, what is a circle? Uh, what is a button? A button's another display object. Um, what's a container? How do we group all these things? 
what are these statements that we're using. So it's a lot about uh, trying to, you know, teach kids what, what code is and what syntax and patience is. Here's uh, these things called parameters, which tell us more information. And um, as well, uh, we can call these things called methods that make the circle do something like center it or drag it or animate it. And they also have parameters that we can pass in there. And then we take a look at animation, how we animate things such as a scale to twice as big in this amount of time and we rewind and loop. And then there we are talking about functions and events, arrays and loops, which are efficiencies and conditionals, uh, which is like an if statement. If the circle's color is blue, then do something. If the circle's color is blue, do something else, do something else. Okay, so that's that helps in coding to provide the logic behind what we're going to do. And then we have these extra things called controls that allow us to do fun things, like let things follow a mouse or, um, well, there's a whole bunch of them, swipers and parallax and so forth. Okay, so this is kids. Uh, if you don't want to be treated like a kid, although who who doesn't really? I mean, when it comes to learning, why not? <laughs> you know, why not say it in the simplest way? Um, but if you don't want to be treated like a kid, here is uh, spells. By the way, is just our doc sort of repackaged as um, you know, kid friendly sort of thing. Hey, here are the spells that do that. But really, you open it up, and that's just the same as the the main Zim docs. Let me show you where that is. Uh, there's the docs right there, which tell you all about circles. So you might be wondering, what can we do with that circle? So here's the circle class right here under shapes, radius, color, border, color, blah, bitty, blah, bitty, blah. And there's a rectangle with height, color, border, color, border width, blah, bitty, blah, bitty, blah. And you open up any of these and it gives you examples of a lot of that stuff. It tells you what the parameters do what things you can do to the rectangle, plus all these things. Um, many of these things are available independently, and there's specific properties for a rectangle, as well as down at the bottom, a whole bunch of information there. Okay, so uh, great. Uh, when I said many of those methods are available, take a look, here's the Zim method. So if I go to the top, you see how we've got stuff to do with the frame. That's all of the, how do we load things in our assets? How do we make a frame in the first place? And some general things like colors and constants. But that's the frame. Then we have our display objects, which are all of the things that we can see, uh, that we can put on the stage, when we have this thing called a stage that we put things. Then we have the methods. So these are methods that are available for all of those display objects. And so rather than define them in each display object over and over again, we separated them out here as main methods. That So you can set the alp or the alpha of um, an object. You can um, apply a tap method on it. There's the drag that we talked about. And again, you open up drag and then it talks about what are the parameters of drag, examples of how to use it, etc. So those are all the methods right there. There's our hit tests. Here's our animations and wigglings. And maybe we can look at some of that as we get into the code. And then here are those controls that we mentioned, how to go from page to page. We've got uh, wrappers and tiles and beads, oh my. A whole bunch of effects and emitters and et cetera. Then there's general code stuff that helps us uh, do things in code like a rand, a nice easy random number. So you can go rand between, uh, here it is right here, random between A and B. And that's, uh, it takes a little bit of code to do that in raw JavaScript. So we've made a nice, easy way to do it. And there's nice, easy ways to grab things from an array, there to shuffle an array, to chop up a picture. So anyway, all this stuff is general code that really doesn't, um, may not even relate to Zim, but just in coding in general. Okay, and that's all there. We've got these short things that allow us to log to the console easily. And then we've got a bunch of helper libraries down here for things that relate to game, like a leaderboard or timers and scores. And then we've got 3D. So we support 3D through 3JS in Zim. We've got multi-user. Uh, we can capture from a camera. 
and these pizzazz things that give us extra stuff. So you would have to bring these libraries in independently. Uh, and it's a little bit advanced. We probably don't have to think about that right now. So all that is the docs. Uh, but I was going to say back there is if you go to the learn section, sorry, learn section here, that was some kids that we were typing in. There's also labs, which is a little bit more general for adults as well. Uh, but down below here is, uh, well, CodePen. CodePen is a great place to learn, and there's some creative coding lessons, but that's not actually for learning how to code. That was more um, how to do creative coding in particular for like uh, art kind of more so, art and games, I guess. But there's the kids. Here's the school. This is what I was trying to get you to. This is uh, the sort of high school, college look at the same kind of thing. So if we go Zim School, there's the lessons again, but um, in more of a perhaps a textbook format. Uh, there's more of it. It's more complete, but you'll see that some things are the same. Also in here, though, there's practice. So if we want to practice making shapes, we can type right here, new uh, triangle. Let's try a triangle since you've seen a, skirt, a circle and stuff and dot center. There's other places that you can put it to, but anyway, there's a centered triangle. And you would find that triangle, well, there's a rectangle, there's a triangle. So it's suggesting you type this. We can't copy it. It's asking you to type that stuff in. It's testing to see if you can do it. So you want to type that stuff in. Transformations are things that we can do to shapes. Um, first of all, we showed you the grid so that you could figure out what X and Y is. And here is us locating at X and Y's. There's us... Um, rotating something and, and so forth. So you can try out all various types of transformations. And then here's tests on components so that you pretty soon can make a dial. It's just as easy to make a dial as it is to make a rectangle. New dial, dot center, a small r there, and I test, and now I've got a dial. Isn't that cool? So Zim is very regular in that sense, you'll find. And uh, that helps make it, you know, it's a design principle makes it easy to to use if things are regular okay so that that's a little bit of an overview of where you might look to kind of want to get started but let me show you now how we can get started <laughs> okay so aside from typing into the html it's probably better if you you know, if you're going to be serious about this, if you have an editor of your own on your own computer and you type into the editor, editors are free and easy to get. Uh, there are a couple places where we talk about how to do that. If we go to the learn section, there's this one right here. So there's learn JavaScript with creative coding. If we go into that, the second, I think it's the second video tells you how to start coding on your own computer. So you can follow that. There's a whole bunch of uh, videos, many, many, many. We then backed out of that a little bit um, because first of all, it was all ES5. Uh, so the last version of JavaScript and slightly older versions of Zim, although you'll be fine with it. But then what we did is we added this Zim Basics right here. So that's probably the latest set of videos that you would want to look at. This is the most complete. And all of this in here follows Zim School. So Zim School matches up uh, lessons to the, mo the modules, in a sense, or the parts that we had there. Okay, so all of that is quite complete. And it's a, a good haul. It will take you some time to go through it all. It's pretty well all that we can think of to get you going with learning JavaScript um, through creative coding. Here are Zim basics, so not quite as much about learning JavaScript, but it also has in the first set of videos, new rectangle, I'm gonna pause right. that. Um, if you look down the right-hand side, how to code there, how to position, how to animate. So I think this bit on how to code is going to be a little bit similar to what we're looking at in this Explorer in that somewhere in here, oh, it's got, does it have these things? Yeah, it's got these things. Um, there's a framework. I'm not sure where we were typing. That's the thing, working in HTML, fitting rectangles in lab. So there's the lab, shapes, school frames, summary for code. Oh, summary for starting a template code in Atom.io. Okay, so at 
at the 16 metal. For the future, that there are uh, in here, we are going to go in Atom. Yep, I see it. There it is. This is called Atom, and we've just pasted a template into a blank page. That's what we're doing now. So there's already a video about that right in the very first Zim Basics on how to get coded. But I wanted to do an explore to just have some fun with you. Um, if, if we're going too fast for you, we're, we're not going to set up Adam, for instance, then you might want to look into some of these videos in the Zim Basics. Okay? And many of those Zim Basics, hey, they're, they're kind of get there to get you started as well. Uh, back in the Zim Learn, <laughs> you know, we've done so many of these. Uh, I'm trying to get out of this. Uh, just close that down. There we go. Um, we've done so, so many of these learn sort of series uh, that they've, you know, who knows? You probably got lots of them, <laughs> but I'm glad you're here with me. We're about to code together. Uh, I just want to show you, if you have no idea what code is, there's the um, series called, we'll just go down here. If you don't even, if you've never really, if you've never heard of the word variable or don't know what a function is, then you might want to start in in the tutorials down here at code zero okay so the code zero is a video series that assumes you know nothing at all about code and it explains a lot of the basics from the ground up okay so uh, if you don't know anything at all about code you might want to you might want to peek around there but you're welcome to watch the rest of this video and see what you think some people just get code right away and it makes sense to them other people uh, get a little bit confused. <laughs> so if you get a little bit confused, start here, you know, in code zero. Okay, so I think one more to say, one more thing to say, if you like reading rather than looking at videos, because learners are different, if you like reading instead of looking at videos, this is it right here. Your guide to creative coding on the canvas is actually more than that. So this is the medium and there's Dr. Abstract, that's me. And it tries to get you coding right away as well, to take that and, and stick it in there. <laughs> you know, hey, great. But it also takes you through some, some other examples there. Um, however, this is the guide for real right here. Canvas libraries and frameworks. So why are we using the canvas? What frameworks are there? And there's a guide for that. Coding environment and templates. So that's a, that's a text-based, hey, let's get started with the template guide. Display objects, a guide on that. So these are whole articles with uh, sort of steps and tutorials and explanations and everything all in the articles, all the way through to style, responsive and adaptive and the controls at the end. So isn't that exciting? And what we've done in this first guide is we've done a little summary for each of those. So Canvas Frameworks, a little summary for the coding environment, a little summary for the display objects, a little summary for the components. So these are all the parts that we can build with. The conveniences as well. We've got this really cool way to do parameters so that it makes it easier or more flexible. There's two ways, basically. Chaining. So these are some of the conveniences that, that Zim has. Uh, interactivity. So how, how do we handle events? How do we know when somebody's clicking on something? Animation on the canvas. So these are all the steps. Accessibility. Uh, assets, so how do we get pictures and, and um, sounds happening? Style, we can apply style like CSS. If you've done HTML and CSS before, we can apply styles like CSS, but on the canvas, isn't that amazing? So there uh, are some examples. Well, that's CSS, and this is the canvas version of it, very similar. As a matter of fact, the coding version of CSS came first. We, we already had squiggly brackets and colons and, you know, and the CSS sort of copied that and so be it, uh, you know. There we go, responsive and adaptive design. So how can we do that on the canvas? And then the various controls as well as a conclusion. So this document, this guide is really a guide about these other 12 guides right here. All right, so a complete set of guides on Medium is available for you as well. And that's it. <laughs> that's the last, uh, which way am I zooming here? <laughs> that's the last one we'll do um, be, uh, before we get into the actual code. So why don't we do that now? I'm gonna pop on over to here. Hopefully that was a nice little intro. And uh, anyway, 
There you go. So here I am in the code. Oh, gosh, we shouldn't pop in here first. <laughs> we should go grab the template. OK, so back on the Zim page, there's a template under the code section here. So to answer how do we get started coding on the canvas, the answer is come to zimjazz.com, press on the code section. Here's the template right here, and hit copy like that. That copies the code. There's various other templates too, but um, this copies it, and then I paste here. One of the reasons I, I forget to do that here on the video is I can just type in the word template like that. You see there's the Zim template, and I go like that, and I get the Zim template that I want to use. But I'm going to paste this one right here, and I'm in Atom, which is, uh, oh, sorry. So this is Atom. Uh, it's a text editor, and there's the code that we just pasted in. It's HTML code right here. But inside the HTML is a script. And the script is saying, please go get Zim from this location right here. Sorry, that, that's not very easy to read for some reason. <laughs> Adam grays out absolute URLs like that. But that's zimjs.org cdn01zim. That's the latest version of Zim. And then we are starting the frame. So the frame makes a canvas tag. So the HTML has a canvas tag. The frame will make a canvas tag, and it makes what's called a stage on that canvas tag. That's the metaphor that was used in Flash. It's the metaphor that was used in Director. So people that have been making interactive media for a long time thought this was a good metaphor, in a sense. If we want to see something, we put it on the stage. If we don't, we take it off the stage. And there we go. And we got these sprites, and sprites are like actors on the stage, blah, blah, blah. That's, you know, that's why it was called director. <laughs> you know, hey, we're directing this, this thing. <laughs> yeah. um, so anyway, that's all left over from there. But we have a frame that will make a stage for us. Uh, basically, we're saying, please fit that into the window, make it this big, and uh, make it light. The, the frame, or the stage will be light, and around the outside will be dark. Uh, so we can put whatever colors we want in there. And when we're ready, call this function called ready. And there's the function. A function is a block of code. Here it is. There's the block right there from this bracket to that bracket. It's a block of code that does something. And so basically, we're saying, uh, we're telling the frame when we're ready, call ready. OK. And um, it will give us all we get if we want a reference to the frame. Sometimes, if we wanted to capture keyboard commands, we ask the frame to tell us what what keys were pressed. So we can use F for that. If we want access to the stage, then we can say S for the stage. If we want to get the width of the stage and the height of the stage, we use W and H. This is all relatively new in Zim, as in, a matter of fact, since the, the last version of Zim. Before that, we had a slightly different template. That's why back there on the, the browser, when we were here, there's older. So this is, I, I've hit the older, this is the older template. We brought in the scripts in a slightly different way. We did our frames and stages. We called them stage, stage W, stage H, and frame. So we did that in a little bit of a different way. But now we're, uh, we're trying this new way, which is generally a bit shorter and hopefully sim more simple. Okay. Um, and here's where we code. So that's why it says, put your code here. So it started off with something. Let's have a look at it. That's the next step in coding. Great, you've popped this into a text editor. By the way, remember, if you want to go get Adam, if you want to know about how to get a text editor, go look at those other uh, the Zim Basics, for instance. But generally, it's, it's just called Adam, or yeah, Adam.io is the site. Oops, not I, Adam.io. And it's easy to download, it just takes two minutes, five minutes, something like that, not even. And you can get Atom starting like this. Atom, though, doesn't come with a, an easy way to see it in a browser. You would have to go outside of Atom and drop the H, you save the HTML page. Uh, note that we've called it intro.html. So that's something as well. You would call this page something.html. Uh, basics.html, first.html, and that makes it an HTML page, which means when you drop it onto a browser, the browser will open it and show it. Yay! Um, we've installed some packages right here, two packages that we use. One is called open in browser right there, 
and the other one is browser plus uh, which maybe doesn't show up there but if i right click here i can say open in browser plus because i've added the package and that opens a browser right here inside of atom for me if i say open in browser like that there it opened in a real browser so in either case that that would be fine um, so those are two packages that are pretty easy to get open in browser and browser plus open in browser singular and straight open in browser and browser plus singular okay um, it helps when I'm showing you things for me to open browser plus just because it kind of stays right here in the same window or screen or whatever you want to call this and it's a little bit easier so that's our blue circle that is centered and dragging you recognize that but uh, we don't have to do that so if I get rid of that save it and refresh so there's the refresh now I don't see anything if I want some different color like yellow for instance, I can refresh and now I've got a yellow background. And if I want a green here, save that and refresh. <laughs> but purple, whatever. I mean, that would be fine too, but it was all kind of blending a little bit. Oh, wow, that's grand. And so look at how that fits in the browser window. Do you see that? And that would do the same thing in another browser. It takes the aspect ratio of 1024 by 768 and makes that fit there. So um, anytime we're building in here, we just keep be aware that we have a width of 1024 and a height of 768. So if I were to make a new rectangle and say we make it the width divided by two, width divided by two, height divided by two, two, I can do it, and we'll make it red and I will center it on the stage. Can you imagine what that will look like? Refresh. So now that's a quarter, a quarter, and this is a half. You see that is basically put it at half the size. And that, yet it's not the real pixels. Now it's smaller. <laughs> now it's bigger, right? But inside of what we have here, we know that the stage width, if I make it the full stage width here, can you imagine what that would look like? Let me refresh here. Now it goes right across the whole stage width, but not the height. Okay, and so th that makes it easier to build with because we know how wide and high it is. However, for mobile, if this were a mobile app, all this space right here and this space would be wasted because that's sort of outside of our working area. Our working area is the stage. So in that case, we would go to the full mode like that. And that looks something like that. Full mode though, does not automatically scale. So there it is, that started off going across the stage, but if I scale this, it's like it has no scaling. So that means in full mode, we have to automatically scale. What we do is we capture an event that says um, the stage is resized. And in that event, we have to resize our rectangle. We have to reposition things. So it's harder to um, code in full mode. But for mobile, that's usually what we do. And for that, in Zim, we have all sorts of ways to scale things. We have all sorts of ways to position things. We have layout classes that provide responsive design, um, etc. So we have tools to do that. It's just it's a little harder to do. So usually we are in what's called the fit mode, where it does fit like that but um, this part isn't seen. So usually when we're making examples, our examples are in fit mode because we don't, we, we like it. We don't mind this working out like this for the most part. It's good to demonstrate a lot of the apps that we make. We, it's easier to make them with a, a width and height. Okay, anyway, let's move along and make something fun, huh? So we're back to having nothing here. And why don't we tile something going across? Tile's kind of cool looking. New tile. And what you'll find is um, if you just make a new something and center it, then something will show up for, for the most part. So there's a default tile. It just happens to be, it looks like that. Uh, if you don't know what to do with a button, just say new button. And let's see what a button looks like. Ah, there's a button, okay. Um, a new radial menu. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I have no idea what that will look like. 
oh, okay, that's the default radial menu. Wow, how about that? Uh, etc. But you can adjust this with parameters to be whatever uh, whatever you want to look at. Here's some controls. They're kind of fun. A new um, emitter. So there's a new emitter that we're going to center on the stage. Oh, neat. And there are conveniences that, that will help us. For instance, if we said new motion controller here, that's also uh, a control. And we we'll center the emitter and put that all around it. We're basically passing the motion controller the emitter. So we're passing our new centered emitter into the motion controller. And now when we press on the stage, whoosh, it follows. Uh, so it's not following my cursor outright. It's just when I press on the stage, it follows. But if we tell it, hey, actually, please follow it on mouse move, I think, mouse move like that. Now, look at that. It's following my mouse. Woo! Isn't that amazing? So just with that little code, you can make something magical. If we didn't want the emitter to emit those things, we could pass in a new label, for instance. Oops, L-A-B-E-L. Hello. Hello. Like that. So there we are now emitting the word hello. And now the word hello is following our cursor. <laughs> hello, goodbye. Goodbye, hello. So that starts to look a little bit confusing, doesn't it? Because we put one thing inside of another, inside of another, etc. Um, they can be separated out. So you can do things like um, set a variable. Const emitter is equal to a new emitter like that. And I'll take away all of this stuff. We need to do something with it to start, so we'll center it on the stage. And then in here, we can pass the emitter. So now we're saying, hey, let's do this in two steps. We'll make, we'll store an emitter in a variable, well, in a const, and there it is. And then we'll use that later. And by putting in two steps, it kind of becomes a little bit more readable. And as you'll see, we're back to our original emitter. And it's following the mouse, like so. Um, so, yeah, that's fun. Isn't that cool? Let's comment that out. Comment. And remember those squiggles we were talking about, or the blobs? We will make a... Oops. We will make a new squiggle. Uh, by the way, the case matters if you're new to coding. This has to be called with a capital F. This has to be called with a small n. That's all lowercase. These need to match. They can be something else, uh, start or something like that, but um, they should match. And there's a squiggle with a capital S. So our classes start with a capital like that. Other things usually don't. Um, constant sometimes do like F. Well, those aren't constant, but anyway. New squiggle, dot center. Let's try it out. And here we go. There it is. There's a squiggle. And it automatically comes with these handles, which we don't have to use if we don't want to. And if we wanted to make it a bit bigger, we could scale it twice as big. And then everything scales, including the handles. You can set it. There's another way to just make it bigger without making the handles bigger. Uh, but I won't bother doing that right now. There's all sorts of things we can do with the squiggle. One thing we can do as well is we can tell it to make it not interactive. So we can hide, see how those things are hidden. We could start them off hidden. So when you press it, then they show up. But uh, if you don't want them to show up ever, then we want to make them interactive. Unfortunately, that's not the very first parameter of the, of the squiggle. The first parameter is the color. Let's try making it black. I believe it is anyway, and then maybe the thickness or something. So there's a black squiggle, okay? So if we wanted to get to the interactive parameter, I don't even know where it is. It's way, it's, you know, there's maybe the 10th parameter. And we would have to put in null, comma, null, comma, null, comma, et cetera, et cetera, until we count how many the interactive, because the parameters need to go in order. So that's not very pleasant. 
And what we've done in Zim is made it so that we can provide parameters in two ways. We can put squiggly brackets and then put the name of the parameter, color red, for instance. Now we have a red squiggle. And the order actually doesn't matter here once we're in here. If I wanted to, I could say interactive colon false as the, the first parameter that we're identifying, even though it isn't the first parameter. So the order inside the squiggly brackets don't matter, or doesn't matter, the order doesn't matter, <laughs> because we've said which parameter it's going to be. You see that? So look, I can't interact with that now. And if I don't care about the color, I don't even need the color. So I could have just said, oh, if I didn't mind it green or whatever color it was, I think it was green, blue. <laughs> if I don't mind it blue, then I can just say interactive false. All right, there's also how many points does it have? So you could adjust how many points and you can even start off with certain points, which is quite wonderful. So we have a tool that lets you, lets you do that. Shall we have a quick look? Back in Zim then, under the code section, there are these things called libraries. And I'm gonna to go to libraries. These are the extra libraries, and we mentioned those before. But at the bottom is Pizzazz. And Pizzazz is a library that will help you with shapes and icons and patterns, but also paths. Paths is a little bit different in that there's it goes to a path tool here where you can go to a menu and say, yeah, I would like this squiggle. Or if it's a blob, blobs are like squiggles, except they are, they are joined together, like or they make a loop in a sense. Okay, so those are different blobs. Here's different squiggles. <laughs> nice one there, <laughs> the wild. Uh, anyway, here's a squiggle right here. If we go to code, this is the code for the points of that squiggle. So I'm going to copy this, copy, or you can make your own. So you can just click on this and start making your own. And now you would get a squiggle that looks like this. Would you rather this squiggle? I go to the code. I hit uh, copy, control C. Okay, so I've copied that squiggle and I come into here. And now what it can do is drop this down onto the next line. We can still make it interactive false if we want. Comma, points, colon, boop. And I paste all of those points in there like so. And we refresh here. And now I've got that squiggle. If we didn't make it interactive false, I put a comment on that line. I refresh here and there's basically the squiggle that we had seen previously. If you know about SVG, you can also um, bring in SVG as points. So just take the SVG points and put it there. There's other ways to handle SVG as well. Isn't that cool? It's not really what I want to do. So I'm going to uh, control X that. Uh, there's a few other tricks to do with that too. But I will start at interactive false like so. Beep, 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 bop, boop, bop, boop. I'm putting this back onto one line. Not that it really matters. So there's our squiggle. And now what we're going to do is we're going to make a new um, circle, I guess. We'll make it uh, 20 and we'll make it red. So sort of a red ball circle. We will, it doesn't really matter where we put this. I'll, I'll just say dot center. But the trick is here, we're going to animate it along uh, well, let me just show you animation first. So here's animation, animate. And uh, we'll comment that out and just show you what the center is. First of all, we're back to, oh, there's the red circle there on the middle, centered. And now we're going to animate that red circle. We're going to animate the scale to be, hmm, go away bar. Uh, animate the scale to be five times as big. And that will animate in a default of one second. So if we don't put any time, this is what happens. Boop. Okay. Boop. So that's animating. If we want that to rewind, well, if we want it to go slower, we could say five seconds, and then it would like be a, a slow animation bigger. We've got easing on that, so it sort of slow speeds up and then slows down. Um, Okay, that's in five seconds. If we wanted it faster, we could say 0.5 seconds. So that's half a, half a second. Whoosh, half a second. Or 0.1. Whoosh, even faster. Okay. Uh, if we want that to loop, 
though, so I'll put it back to one there. If we want it to loop, loop is further on. We still have to go through what type of easing. We have to go what, through a callback. I think we even do rewind before we get to loop. So who knows how long far it is. So here's where we can start by putting squiggly brackets around those. We'll drop them down and say, this is the props that we're animating. This is the time that we're animating it in. And then comma uh, loop colon true. So you see what we've done there? It's a little bit confusing just because these are the names of the parameters. Here are the values. One of the values itself has squiggly brackets. That's because this is various properties. I could also say something like color colon uh, blue there. So now I'm animating the scale to five and the color to blue in one second, and I'm going to loop that which might not look exactly uh, how you thought it would look. Well, blue was a bad color to pick, wasn't it? We'll go purple, just because the squiggles, that color too. But that's loop. Maybe we also want rewind. Rewind, colon true, it doesn't really matter the order there. Isn't that amazing? So uh, Zim's animation is quite, straightforward. We can chain it right on the object. So note we haven't even put the object into a variable. We can just put all this stuff right on it. Uh, great. However, that's not really what I wanted to animate. I wanted to animate it along the squiggle. So I'm going to back up there and just say the path is this squiggle. But we haven't identified the squiggle. See, now we need to say, hey, it's that squiggle there but we didn't store this in a variable, so we can't. Uh, we don't have a reference to it. So here we go, const, uh, squiggle, or path, or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Okay, is that, and then here we can say path. If it's ES6, we don't even need it, but often I put it anyway as we're beginning here. So now we refresh here, and there it goes, animating along the path. Woo, whoa, isn't that fun? Let's make it a bit bigger, 40. I don't think I could grab that. It's also going pretty fast. Uh, let's see. So if we want to slow it down a bit, we could go five seconds. Sure. There's the easing. You see how it sort of starts off slow, goes fast, slows down as it gets to the end. And here we can make it draggable as well. Dot drag. Oh, sorry. Uh, not dot drag. Mm, yeah, it's actually down here drag colon true comma there we go and we pick it up and now we can drag it along there and we have our a choice by as soon as we say make it draggable it just assumes that you want to um, not animate it but if you say start paused I think it looks start paused colon false like that, then it will override that and starts to animate and I can pick it up and drag it and it still animates. Isn't that cool? Like, I mean, that's unbelievable. Not only that, but th this, oh, I was gonna say it's editable. <laughs> it's editable, but we turned it interactive false there, didn't we? So let's comment that out. If we so desire. Let me do that. And now it's an editable, um, draggable path as well. So there's nobody uh, out there doing that. Paper was kind of, paper came from from Illustrator coding, and even they don't have this system. There is animation along a path with GreenSock, for instance, and in animating along a, an SVG, and they, GreenSock does a great job on its animation. We're par with GreenSock. We're you know same amount of code, if not less. Um, okay, so wow, that's cool, huh? And we could have made that the emitter as well. Instead of the squiggle, the emitter could be following that path. Although I don't know if we can drag the emitter. I don't think so. But we can make the emitter follow the circle that is draggable uh, and do that. So uh, this has been a Zim Explore where we're just goofing around, you know, building, building some stuff. And <laughs> we built a lot of things. Um, there's other bits of magic to Zim as well. Let me just delete all that, I guess. Sorry. Right, maybe I should comment that out. One day, maybe you'll want to see this code again. 
And let's make a, a new tile again, just to mention it there, dot center. So remember how we had a tile that was centered and it looks something like that. If we hit drag on it, dot drag, then it will drag the individual parts of the, the container. So a tile is a container that holds all those things. If we don't want to do that, we can say all colon true. So we're jumping right to the all parameter and saying all colon true. And now it drags it all. That's not really what I wanted to show you though. Um, what I want to show you is this thing called dynamic parameters because it's another convenience of Zim. And in the tile, if we tile something like a new rectangle, rectangle, well, I'll tile a circle still, like so, then it won't make much difference if we just left it like that. But if we want, we can make it 100 comma red. Okay, so now we're going to tile um, uh, like so. And we can specify the number as well. Let's make this a bit smaller, 50 in, in radius. And we can specify the number five by four. So that's how many ro how many columns and how many rows. And then the next is spacing. So 10 and comma 10. And there's our spacing, like so. All right, a good. But you know, then we're tiling the same object, which you know may or may not want. So dynamic parameters allow us to do things like put a red or blue. And so if we put have an array of things, it's going to randomly pick from that array. So we could put as many colors as we wanted in there. Or we can do a series. So a series is another dynamic parameter uh, format. So with a series, we put things inside there, and that's called a Zim series. Now it does red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, etc. And series can have a whole bunch of weird things put to them too. You can skip numbers, you can uh, bounce, you know, like go backwards in the series, you can, etc. There's a bunch of different things that series can have on them. Over here, we can put mins and maxes. So it could be something like min of 50 and a max of 100. And then we get this, where they're different sizes within that range. So that's a range. Uh, Zim, they're called Zim V values, dynamic parameters, because we introduced them in the fifth version of Zim, which is Zim V, V E E. And uh, so there's min and max, there's a series, there's an array. Uh, these also work in, in style as well, so I'll just leave that there like so. If we have new circle, well, let's go to a button, something a little bit different. New button dot center. And let's show you a loc or doing something. We could have tiled the buttons actually, but anyway, here's a, a second button and we'll just dot loc that button at 100 comma 100. And heck, let's make a third button. A uh, new button and to show you pose dot pose. So pose 100 comma 100 would be, I guess the same as the loc, but here we can say right um, top if we want or right bottom. And let's have a look at what we've got so far. So there's three buttons. One is centered, one's 100, 100. So 100 over, 100 down. The other one is 100 over and 100 down from the right top or bottom, like that. Those are all capital letters. Eh. Bottom. <laughs> Those are all capital letters, and there that means they're constants, and they just are the equivalent to right. We could have said right as well. But uh, there you go. All right, cool, huh? So that's positioning around the edges, or you could position it, say, zero from the bottom, and then it would go right on the bottom but you could say zero from the center and then it would be uh, zero from the center but 100 from the right okay so you can position around the center this would be 100 down from the center so now it's 100 down from the center etc I actually want the bottom button. all right there we go we've got three buttons let's have a look at how Zim does style style equals 
First of all, uh, buttons have, instead of a color, the color is the color of the text, much like HTML. So background color, uh, which also can be shortened to BG color or background, I'll do the whole thing, background color, but without the dash, colon red. So now uh, all these buttons will have a background color of red. Note the roll background color isn't red, it's a, it's a different color, okay? Um, but uh, let's see, what if we made a dial as well? Let's make a new dial and we will dot pose that 100 comma 100 from the right comma top, like so. And there's the dial. Note that the dial's background color is red too and say we didn't want that. It's like, uh, well, there we have a couple things. One, we could put the background color right on here of whatever, um, gray. And now the dial has over, like this overrides any styles that we're applying here, much like in CSS. But if we didn't want to do it that way, another solution possibly would be to say, all right, background color red, but these are the styles only for the button, please. So we could say button, we'll have these styles, background color red. So that goes right in there. Now the buttons will be background color red, but the dial will not be. Oh, crap. <laughs> Dial's default color was gray. <laughs> Go figure, huh? Uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, if we put background color, background color green, then you can see that that, well, anyway, there's a background color green. And if we didn't do this. I don't know if my demonstration was broken because of that or not. Uh, there it is. Background color is green, even though we've said make all background colors red. If I get rid of this now, pop, like so. It's now red because of that. But if I go to button, like so, what color will it be? <laughs> here's, here's your test. Have you been paying attention? You ready? It'll be gray, right? <laughs> there, there it is, gray. So I just accidentally made yeah, anyway, so um, you see what we mean? So now that's only on the buttons that we're applying that. And watch this. What about if I make it random red or blue? <laughs> First time it was all red, <laughs> just coincidentally. Okay, which it, which it might be. So there you go. We're applying the Zim V values right here in the styles as well. So each button gets made. I, I could do a series if we wanted as well. All right, very, very powerful. Uh, Zim V values can also be the results of a function as well. So um, you can pass in the uh, uh, a function here that returns some value and then and then get that. So for instance, in an emitter, if I'm emitting a bunch of snowflakes, maybe it's a function. Do you want to see what that looks like? Do I have a browser around? Mm, under examples, under collections, we have a collection of uh, particles there, uh, the emitter. And here is snowflakes. And so every snowflake that gets made there is made from a snowflake uh, snow, snow fake. It is a snow fake. <laughs> snow fake flake. Um, er, everyone is made from a function. And that's what it's emitting. And in this case, did you notice the difference? The emitter is not emitting from the center. The emitter is all falling from the top, or it could be from the sides. Not only that, but the emitter is swirling around. Do you see that? How as it's falling, it seems to the snowflakes kind of swirl towards a place right to there now. And then that's, that's called a sink. So you can make uh, anything a sink. We have this thing that's just wiggling around. Wiggle is like an animation, but it just keeps on wiggling and it can wiggle it at different speeds and stuff. And so we've just got this thing wiggling around and the snowflakes are drawn to it anyway. The emitter particles are drawn to it. There's Here's an example of that as well, where the emitter this time is being... <laughs> darn is being drawn <laughs> it's being drawn and being drawn <laughs> to the 
Uh, maybe use the, the wrong word previously, go figure. So we're drawing a line, or the path of the emitter, but it's actually being drawn to the center uh, point, and that's what's causing that look. Isn't that cool? Um, oh, this one wiggles. Whoa, I hear some sound. This one is also using a sink up above here to just, it wiggles like this to make the flames just kind of wiggle back and forth as they're being emitted there. Ooh, a new color. Wow. I mean, Sim is just so much fun. There's, there's absolutely no doubt, doubt about it. We're exploring, but we haven't even touched on, for instance, uh, physics. So this is adding physics to it. It's so easy. It's just about as easy. Do you want to see it? We have to bring in physics. So right up here, underscore physics. So we change this to the physics module right there. So this is Zim underscore physics. We've got buttons. I guess we could add, they're not center reg. So anything that goes into the, the physics world should be a registration point in the center. But why don't we add it to the dial? So we'll leave, we won't add physics to there. We'll add physics to the dial dot add physics. This will work really silly. And we refresh here. Bop. <laughs> Didn't bounce much. Um, so did you see that? And we, it just fell because it's like you know, gravity is interacting with it. Uh, if we make, if we add it to the, this is the bottom button, dot add physics like this. Oops, add physics. And then we say false here. So what this means is don't make it move. The only problem is this button is not doesn't have a center registration so before we do that let me just do this for you uh, dot outline outline like so and we'll comment out the adding of the physics so we haven't added physics to that button yet so you see the button right there it is um, its registration point is in the top left corner in the physics world it expects the registration point to be in the center so what we would need to do to that button is we would say dot reg center like that. And I believe that puts it in both. Yeah, so there we go. So registration point where in the horizontal comma where in the vertical. Or if I said top there, it would be top. Let's have a look at it. See that round circle? It's in the center horizontally, but at the top. But if you don't put the second one, it just assumes you want them both centered there. So that will center the registration point. Another way that was quite common before we in, in, invented this system for centering or for the registration was a dot center, I'm going to sneeze, dot center reg. And that centers it, but centers its registration point and then we position it. So it just was a little bit awkward to have to use center reg because that would center it on the stage usually and then position it. It was like, well, wait a minute. We've asked to center it and then right away we've asked to position it somewhere else. So that always rubbed me the wrong way a little bit. So we went into here, reg, and made it so that we could uh, just apply a center reg. This isn't adding it to the stage at all. It's just changing the registration point. And then we go and add it to the stage. The other one, you know, it's no speed difference or anything. So great, we've got these buttons. Uh, oh, I don't know why. I was wondering why all of a sudden one wasn't the right color. Uh, it's because we're randomizing up here. So let's just comment out that so I don't get confused. And now we can add physics to this one. So let's do that. Mm instead of outlining. Outlining is just to show us what's going on. It shows us where the bounds of the object are, uh, is, bounds is, where the registration point is. And this is inside the object. If we go into the button, that's where its origin is. Zero, zero is right there. And did I save that? Save and refresh. Well, now take a look at that. Look at that. Uh, oh, we're <laughs> operating, still still operating these things. Isn't that amazing? Uh, but if we wanted to drag this stuff around, this is, um, it, it's probably would have been better for us to go const physics. So we'll usually what we do is, is here's where we can specify 
oh no sorry wrong. it's equal to a new physics physics like that here's where we specify the, the gravity and the boundaries and a few other things but that sets up a physics object and that allows us to also say things like physics dot drag like that so drag works a little bit differently in physics this means just drag everything that's in the physics object well everything that isn't frozen so this thing is frozen but this one's not so check that out. Now we're tossing around a dial there. It's not very bouncy though. So we can make it bouncy though. We can say when we add the physics, we want to get to the bounciness. Bounciness, <laughs> colon. If we make it a bounciness of one, that's as bouncy. I don't know if it's as bouncy as it can get, but it's it's really too bouncy. Boing, get a boing, get a boing. It's like a super ball bouncy. Boing, get a bing, get a bing, get a bing, get a bing. It bounces kind of forever. Boing, boing, boing. And note that we can drop it on that one, but not on these ones, because we didn't we didn't add the physics to those ones. So if we want sort of normal bouncy, maybe uh, try point five. That's half half bouncy. Bonk. Okay, a little bouncy. Check out that roll. Isn't that cool? Got stuck under there. <laughs> um, we would want to oh. By the way, I think we could up here just say, hey, reg. I think we can do reg. Let's try it, reg center. We might have to do reg x, reg y. So this says make the registration point in the center. Um, and if we didn't put the registration point in the center, well, let's go to the right place. I might have to do reg x, reg y. Yeah, it missed. See, now it's kind of like thinks it's up here in the physics world. Reg x. Bridge. Y colon center. Hopefully this works. I think we're supposed to be able to set the registration point. Uh, nope, it broke something. So we're getting an error. No error. Huh. We'll have to look into that. I believe that would have been how it's done. Maybe I can't use those. Maybe we've got to put a value on them. Yeah, that's probably the case. They probably need a value like 10 and 10. Yeah, because if it all goes to the top, that means something is undefined. Yeah, so that'll work, but it's not the registration point that we're wanting. So in other words, we don't know what it's going to be put the registration on. Therefore, we can't use the center there. Maybe we can. We'll have to look into that. I would file a bug. So uh, how that would look is I would go... Whoop, like that little desktop reveal I go into slack here and go into either requests or bugs what would we call this one well I don't know I'll call it a bug not sure uh, and I can just say check on center being used well I'll say center comma etc because left and right top and bottom being used as value for reg x and reg y style there we go and that way i won't forget about that little bug and these are various other bugs that we've dealt with and this is the zim forum for uh slack uh, right here okay and close that down though bring that back so if we do want to reg them in the center, it looks like we could calculate that up there, but we may as well just do it here. So in Atom, we can press on all of those three things, dot reg, like so, center, like that. And then we also want to add physics to them. And if we want them all to be stationary, which they don't have to be, uh, there they are. Something got broken on one of these things button has nothing add physics reg center false what's that one doing it's got something that's been put against the left that oh this is the center one oh we located it so if we have it just looks awkward because i guess this makes it looks like it's narrow but if we've changed the registration point now it's 100 over and 100 down to the registration point here up at the top whereas if we posed it check out the difference here if we pose it, 
now the edge of it will be 100 and the edge of it will be that's that's what we want that's kind of what i was expecting there just like this one is 100 over 100 up this one is 100 over 100 up to the edge of the object whereas loc is to the registration point and if the registration points in the middle that means it's 100 to the registration point 100 down that's fine that's what you know that's what we asked for but if i pose it slightly different Okay, so great. Now we should be able to drop this thing on all, all... Oh, I can't quite drop it on that. Isn't that cool, though? It's like, oh my gosh, we're, we've almost got a, like a side-scroller here just using uh, Zim buttons. Uh, how exciting. Anyway, we've got a series called... Let's just go out and show you that. We've got a series out here. Here, by the way, is like a game of keep it up, boring, boring two, three, four, so we can calculate when something is hitting. I just hit the ground, zero. We can also apply forces on here. Throw that thing around. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> we cheat. Sometimes they do that. I'll just bounce it right up above this thing and we can go quite some time. Uh, what I was gonna show you though is back on the Zim site under the learn section. If you want a fun series, this one right here, code in five minutes. And we show you a whole bunch of things we can code in five minutes. We've actually been an hour and 10 minutes, though, on this Explore. So I think that's <laughs> long enough for you guys, huh? But that was just some fun exploring, playing around in Zim. Uh, like the video if, if you did like the video. If you're still here, of course, you, you must have liked it. Join us at zimjs.com slash slack or zimjs.com slash discord. And I am Dr. Abstract. This has been a Zim Explorer. Have a great day or night. Cheers. Zimjazz.com.